Jacques Chirac. Jacques René Chirac is a French politician who served as President of France and ex officio co Prince of Andorra from 1995 to 2007. Chirac previously was Prime Minister of France from 1974 to 1976 and from 1986 to 1988, as well as Mayor of Paris from 1977 to 1995. After completing his degree at Sciences Po, a term at Harvard University, and the École Nationale d'Administration, Chirac began his career as a high-level civil servant, and entered politics shortly after. Chirac occupied various senior positions, including Minister of Agriculture and Minister of the Interior. Chirac's internal policies initially included lower tax rates, the removal of price controls, strong punishment for crime and terrorism, and business privatization. After pursuing these policies in his second term as prime minister, he changed his views. He argued for more socially responsible economic policies, and was elected president in the 1995 presidential election with 52.6% of the vote in the second round, beating socialist Lionel Jospin, after campaigning on a platform of healing the social rift. Then, Chirac's economic policies, based on Durajism, allowing for state-directed investment, stood in opposition to the laissez-faire policies of the United Kingdom, which Chirac famously described as Anglo-Saxon ultraliberalism. He is also known for his stand against the American-led assault on Iraq, his recognition of the collaborationist French government's role in deporting Jews, and his reduction of the presidential term from seven years to five through a referendum in 2000. At the 2002 French presidential election, he won 82.2% of the vote in the second round against the far-right candidate, Jean-Marie Le Pen. During his second term, however, he had a very low approval rating and was considered one of the least popular presidents in modern French history. On December 15, 2011, the Paris court declared Chirac guilty of diverting public funds and abusing public confidence, and gave him a two-year suspended prison sentence. Chirac, born in the geoffroy saint Lair clinic, is the son of Abel François-Marie Chirac, a successful executive for an aircraft company, and Marie-Louise Vallette, a housewife. His great-grandparents on both sides were peasants, but his two grandfathers were teachers from St. Ferioline Corres. According to Chirac, his name originates from the long dock, that of the troubadours, therefore that of poetry. He is a Roman Catholic. Chirac was an only child. He was educated in Paris at the Cura de Mer, a private school. He then attended the Lycée Carnot and the Lycée Louis Le Grand. After his baccalaureate, he served for three months as a sailor on a coal transporter. Chirac played rugby union for Brief's youth team and also played at university level. He played number eight in second row. In 1956, he married Bernadette Chirgerne de Corsal, with whom he had two daughters, Lawrence and Claude. Claude has long worked as a public relations assistant and personal advisor, while Lawrence, who suffered from anorexia nervosa in her youth, did not participate in the political activities of her father. Chirac is the grandfather of Martin Ray Chirac by the relationship of Claude with French judoka Thierry Ray. Jacques and Bernadette Chirac also have a foster daughter, on Dautroxel. Inspired by General Charles de Gaulle, Chirac started to pursue a civil service career in the 1950s. During this period, he joined the French Communist Party, sold copies of L'Humanité, and took part in meetings of a communist cell. In 1950, he signed the Soviet-inspired Stockholm Appeal for the Abolition of Nuclear Weapons, which led him to be questioned when he applied for his first visa to the United States. In 1953, after graduating from the Paris Institute of Political Studies, he attended Harvard University's summer school, before entering the ENA, the Grand École National School of Administration, which trains France's top civil servants, in 1957. Chirac trained as a reserve military officer and armored cavalry at Samor, where he was ranked first in his year. He then volunteered to fight in the Algerian War using personal connections to be sent despite the reservations of his superiors. His superiors did not want to make him an officer because they suspected had communist leanings. After leaving the ENA in 1959, he became a civil servant in the Court of Auditors. In April 1962, Chirac was appointed head of the personal staff of Prime Minister Georges Pompidou. This appointment launched Chirac's political career. Pompidou considered Chirac his protégé and referred to him as my bulldozer for his skill at getting things done. The nickname Le Bulldozer caught on in French political circles, where it also referred to his abrasive manner. As late as the 1988 presidential election, 
Chirac maintained this reputation. In 1995, an anonymous British diplomat said Chirac cuts through the crap and comes straight to the point. It's refreshing, although you have to put your seat belt on when you work with him. At Pompidou's suggestion, Chirac ran as a Gaullist for a seat in the National Assembly in 1967. He was elected deputy for his home corps as Departement, a stronghold of the left. This surprising victory in the context of a Gaullist dead permitted him to enter the government as Minister of Social Affairs. Although Chirac was well situated in de Gaulle's entourage, being related by marriage to the general sole companion at the time of the appeal of 18 June 1940, he was more of a Pompadolian than a Gaullist. When student and worker unrest rocked France in May 1968, Chirac played a central role in negotiating a truce. Then, as State Secretary of Economy, he worked closely with Valéry Giscard d'Estaing, who headed the Ministry of Economy and Finance. After some months in the Ministry for Relations with Parliament, Chirac's first high-level post came in 1972 when he became Minister of Agriculture and Rural Development under Pompidou, who had been elected president in 1969, after de Gaulle retired. Chirac quickly earned a reputation as a champion of French farmers' interests, and first attracted international attention when he assailed U.S., West German, and European Commission agricultural policies which conflicted with French interests. On February 27, 1974, after the resignation of Raymond Marcelon, Chirac was appointed Minister of the Interior. On March 21, 1974, he cancelled the safari project due to privacy concerns after its existence was revealed by Le Monde. From March 1974, he was entrusted by President Pompidou with preparations for the presidential election and scheduled for 1976. These elections were moved forward because of Pompidou's sudden death on April 2, 1974. Chirac vainly attempted to rally Gaullists behind Prime Minister Pierre Mesmer. Jacques Chaban Delmas announced his candidacy in spite of the disapproval of the Pompadolians. Chirac and others published the Call of the 43 in favor of Giscard d'Estaing, the leader of the non gaullist part of the parliamentary majority. Giscard d'Estaing was elected as Pompidou's successor after France's most competitive election campaign in years. In return, the new president chose Chirac to lead the cabinet. When Valéry Giscard d'Estaing became president, he nominated Chirac as Prime Minister on May 27, 1974, in order to reconcile the Giscardian and non-Giscardian factions of the parliamentary majority. At the age of 41, Chirac stood out as the very model of the Jeune Lou of French politics, but he was faced with the hostility of the barons of Gaullism who considered him a traitor for his role during the previous presidential campaign. In December 1974, he took the lead of the Union of Democrats for the Republic against the will of its more senior personalities. As Prime Minister, Chirac quickly set about persuading the Gaullists that, despite the social reforms proposed by President Giscard, the basic tenets of Gaullism, such as national and European independence, would be retained. Chirac was advised by Pierre Juliet and Marie France Garaud, two former advisors of Pompidou. These two organized the campaign against Chaban Delmas in 1974. They advocated a clash with Giscard d'Estaing because they thought his policy bewildered the conservative electorate. Citing Giscard's unwillingness to give him authority, Chirac resigned as prime minister in 1976. He proceeded to build up his political base among France's several conservative parties, with the goal of reconstituting the Gaullist UDR into a neo Gaullist group, the Rally for the Republic. Chirac's first tenure as prime minister was also an arguably progressive one, with improvements in both the minimum wage and the social welfare system carried out during the course of his premiership. After his departure from the cabinet, Chirac wanted to gain the leadership of the political right, in order to gain the French presidency in the future. The RPR was conceived as an electoral machine against President Giscard d'Estaing. Paradoxically, Chirac benefited from Giscard's decision to create the office of mayor in Paris, which had been in abeyance since the 1871 Commune, because the leaders of the Third Republic feared that having municipal control of the capital would give the mayor too much power. In 1977, Chirac stood as a candidate against Michel Dornano, a close friend of the president, and he won. As mayor of Paris, Chirac's political influence grew. He held this post until 1995. Chirac supporters point out that, as mayor, he provided programs to help the elderly, people with disabilities, and single mothers, and introduced the street cleaning motocrot, while providing incentives for businesses to stay in Paris. His opponents contend that he installed clientelist policies. In 1978, 
he attacked the pro-European policy of Valéry Giscard d'Estaing, and made a nationalist turn with the December 1978 call of Cochin, initiated by his councillors Marie-France Garot and Pierre Juliette, which had first been called by Pompidou. Hospitalized in Cochin Hospital after a crash, he declared that is always about the drooping of France, the pro-foreign party acts with its peaceable and reassuring voice. He appointed Yvonne Blot, an intellectual who would later join the National Front, as director of his campaigns for the 1979 European election. After the poor results of the election, Chirac broke with Garot and Juliet. Vexed Marie France Garot stated, We thought Chirac was made of the same marble of which statues are carved in, we perceive he's of the same faience bidets are made of. His rivalry with Giscard d'Estaing intensified. Although it has been often interpreted by historians as the struggle between two rival French right wing families, both figures in fact were members of the liberal, Orleanist tradition. According to historian Alain Gerard Slamadot, but the eviction of the Gaullist barons and of President Giscard d'Estaing convinced Chirac to assume a strong neo Gaullist stance. Chirac made his first run for president against Giscard d'Estaing in the 1981 election, thus splitting the center right vote. He was eliminated in the first round with 18% of the vote. He reluctantly supported Giscard in the second round. He refused to give instructions to the RPR voters but said that he supported the incumbent president in a private capacity, which was interpreted as almost like de facto support of the Socialist Party's candidate, François Mitterrand, who was elected by a broad majority. Giscard has always blamed Chirac for his defeat. He was told by Mitterrand, before his death, that the latter had dined with Chirac before the election. Chirac told the Socialist candidate that he wanted to get rid of Giscard. In his memoirs, Giscard wrote that between the two rounds, he phoned the RPR headquarters. He passed himself off as a right wing voter by changing his voice. The RPR employee advised him certainly do not vote Giscard. After 1981, the relationship between the two men became tense, with Giscard, even though he had been in the same government coalition as Chirac, criticizing Chirac's actions openly. After the May 1981 presidential election, the right also lost the subsequent legislative election that year. However, as Giscard had been knocked out, Chirac appeared as the principal leader of the right-wing opposition. Due to his attacks against the economic policy of the socialist government, he gradually aligned himself with prevailing economically liberal opinion, even though it did not correspond with Gaullist doctrine. While the far-right National Front grew, taking advantage of the proportional representation electoral system which had been introduced for the 1986 legislative elections, he signed an electoral pact with the Giscardian Party Union for French Democracy. When the RPR-UDF right-wing coalition won a slight majority in the National Assembly in the 1986 election, Mitterrand appointed Chirac prime minister. This unprecedented power-sharing arrangement, known as cohabitation, gave Chirac the lead in domestic affairs. However, it is generally conceded that Mitterrand used the areas granted to the President of the Republic, or reserved domains of the Presidency, Defense, and Foreign Affairs, to belittle his Prime Minister. Chirac's cabinet sold many public companies, renewing the liberalization initiated under Laurent Fabius's socialist government of 1984 to 1986, and abolished the solidarity tax on wealth a symbolic tax on those with high-value assets introduced by Mitterrand's government. Elsewhere, the plan for university reform caused a crisis in 1986 when a student called Molly Kusikin was killed by the police, leading to massive demonstrations and the proposal's withdrawal. It has been said during other student crises that this event strongly affected Jacques Chirac, who was afterwards careful about possible police violence during such demonstrations after large student demonstrations against it. One of his first acts concerning foreign policy was to call back Jacques Foucault, who had been de Gaulle's and his successor's leading counselor for African matters, called by journalist Stephen Smith the father of all networks on the continent, at the time, in 1986, aged 72. Jacques Foucault, who had also co-founded the Gaullist SAC militia along with Charles Pasqua, and who was a key component of the France Afrique system, was again called to the Elysee Palace when Chirac won the 1995 presidential election. Furthermore, confronted by anti colonialist movements in New Caledonia, Prime Minister Chirac ordered a military intervention against the separatists in the Uvia cave, leading to several tragic deaths. He allegedly refused any alliance with Jean Marie Le Pen's Front National. Chirac ran against Mitterrand for a second time in the 1988 election. He obtained 20% of the vote in the first round 
but lost the second with only 46%. He resigned from the cabinet and the right lost the next legislative election. For the first time, his leadership over the RPR was challenged. Charles Pasqua and Philippe Seguin criticized his abandonment of Gaullist doctrines. On the right, a new generation of politicians, the Renovation Men, accused Chirac and Giscard of being responsible for the electoral defeats. In 1992, convinced a man could not become president whilst advocating anti European policies, he called for a yes vote in the referendum on the Maastricht Treaty, against the opinion of Pasqua, Seguin, and a majority of the RPR voters, who chose to vote no. While he still was mayor of Paris, Chirac went to Abidjan where he supported President Tufwe Boigny, although the latter was being called a thief by the local population. Chirac then declared that multipartism was a kind of luxury. Nevertheless, the right won the 1993 legislative election. Chirac announced that he did not want to come back as prime minister, suggesting the appointment of Edward Ballader, who had promised that he would not run for the presidency against Chirac in 1995. However, Benefiting from positive polls, Ballader decided to be a presidential candidate, with the support of a majority of right-wing politicians. Ballader broke from Chirac along with a number of friends and allies, including Charles Pasqua, Nicolas Sarkozy, etc., who supported his candidacy. A small group of fiddles would remain with Chirac, including Alain Juppé and Jean-Louis Debray. When Nicolas Sarkozy became president in 2007, Juppé was one of the few Chiracuians to serve in François Fillon's government. During the 1995 presidential campaign, Chirac criticized the sole thought of neoliberalism represented by his challenger on the right and promised to reduce the social fracture, placing himself more to the center and thus forcing Ballader to radicalize himself. Ultimately, he obtained more votes than Ballader in the first round, and then defeated the socialist candidate Lionel Jospin in the second round. Chirac was elected on a platform of tax cuts and job programs, but his policies did little to ease the labor strikes during his first months in office. On the domestic front, neoliberal economic austerity measures introduced by Chirac and his conservative Prime Minister Alain Juppé, including budgetary cutbacks, proved highly unpopular. At about the same time, it became apparent that Juppé and others had obtained preferential conditions for public housing, as well as other perks. At the year's end Chirac faced major workers' strikes which turned itself, in November to December 1995, into a general strike, one of the largest since May 1968. The demonstrations were largely pitted against Chappé's plan on the reform of pensions, and led to the dismissal of the latter. Shortly after taking office, Kirakun daunted by international protests by environmental groups insisted upon the resumption of nuclear tests at Mururo Atoll in French Polynesia in 1995 a few months before signing the Comprehensive Test Ban Treaty. Reacting to criticism, Chirac said, You only have to look back at 1935, there were people then who were against France arming itself, and look what happened. On February 1, 1996, Chirac announced that France had ended once and for all its nuclear testing, intending to accede to the Comprehensive Test Ban Treaty. Elected as President of the Republic, he refused to discuss the existence of French military bases in Africa despite requests by the Ministry of Defense and the Quai d'Orsay. The French army thus remained in Côte d'Ivoire as well as in Omar Bongo's Gabon. Prior to 1995, the French government had maintained that the French Republic had been dismantled when Philippe Péta instituted a new French state during World War II and that the Republic had been re-established when the war was over. It was not for France, therefore, to apologize for the roundup of Jews for deportation that happened while the Republic had not existed and was carried out by a state, Vichy France, which it did not recognize. President Francois Mitterrand had reiterated this position, the Republic had nothing to do with this. I do not believe France is responsible, he said in September 1994. Chirac was the first president of France to take responsibility for the deportation of Jews during the Vichy regime. In a speech made on July 16, 1995 at the site of the Belle apostrophe H. I. V. Roundup, where 13,000 Jews had been held for deportation to concentration camps in July 1942, Chirac said, France, on that day, committed the irreparable. Those responsible for the roundup were 4,500 policemen and gendarmes, French, under the authority of their leaders who, obeyed the demands of the Nazis. The criminal folly of the occupiers was seconded by the French, by the French state. In 1997, 
Chirac dissolved parliament for early legislative elections in a gamble designed to bolster support for his conservative economic program. But instead, it created an uproar, and his power was weakened by the subsequent backlash. The Socialist Party, joined by other parties on the left, soundly defeated Chirac's conservative allies, forcing Chirac into a new period of cohabitation with Jospin as prime minister, which lasted five years. Cohabitation significantly weakened the power of Chirac's presidency. The French president, by a constitutional convention, only controls foreign and military policy, and even then, allocation of funding is under the control of parliament and under the significant influence of the prime minister. Short of dissolving parliament and calling for new elections, the president was left with little power to influence public policy regarding crime, the economy, and public services. Chirac seized the occasion to periodically criticize Jospin's government. Nevertheless, his position was weakened by scandals about the financing of RPR by Paris municipality. In 2001, the left, represented by Bertrand Delano, won a majority on the city council of the capital. Jean Tiberi, Chirac's successor at the Paris City Hall, was forced to resign after having been put under investigations in June 1999 on charges of trafficked influences in the HLMs of Paris affairs. Dembéry was finally expelled from the Rally for the Republic, Chirac's party, on October 12, 2000, declaring to the Figaro magazine on November 18, 2000, Jacques Chirac is not my friend anymore. After the publication of the Jean-Claude Marie Balamond on September 22, 2000, in which Jean-Claude Marie in charge of the RPR's financing, directly accused Chirac of organizing the network, and of having been physically present on October 5, 1986, when Mary gave in cash 5 million francs, which came from companies who had benefited from state deals, to Michel Roussan, personal secretary of Chirac. Chirac refused to attend court in response to his summons by Judge Eric Alphen, and the highest echelons of the French justice system declared that he could not be inculpated while in office. During his two terms, he increased the Elysee Palace's total budget by 105 percent. He doubled the number of presidential cars, to 61 cars and 7 scooters in the palace's garage. He has hired 145 extra employees, the total number of the people he employed simultaneously was 963. As the supreme commander of the French armed forces, he reduced the French military budget, as did his predecessor. At the end of his first term it accounted for 3 percent of GDP. In 1998 the French aircraft carrier Clemenceau was decommissioned after 37 years off service, and another aircraft carrier was decommissioned two years later after 37 years of service, leaving the French Navy with no aircraft carrier until 2001, when Charles de Gaulle aircraft carrier was commissioned. He also reduced expenditures on nuclear weapons and the French nuclear arsenal was reduced to include 350 warheads compared to the Russian nuclear arsenal that consists of 16,000 warheads. He also published a plan which assumes reducing the number of fighters the French military has by 30. After François Mitterrand left office in 1995, Chirac began a rapprochement with NATO by joining the military committee and attempting to negotiate a return to the integrated military command, which failed after the French demand for parity with the United States went unmet. The possibility of a further attempt foundered after Chirac was forced into cohabitation with a socialist led cabinet between 1997 to 2002, then poor Franco American relations after the French UN veto threat over Iraq in 2003 made transatlantic negotiations impossible. On July 25, 2000, as Chirac and the First Lady were returning from the G7 summit in Okinawa, Japan, they were nearly killed by Air France Flight 4590 after they landed at Charles de Gaulle International Airport. The first couple were in an Air France Boeing 747 taxiing toward the terminal when the jet had to stop and wait for Flight 4590 to take off. The departing plane, an Aerospatial BAC Concorde, ran over a strip of metal on takeoff that punctured its left fuel tank and sliced electrical wires near the left landing gear. The sequence of events ignited a massive fire and caused the Concorde to veer left on its takeoff roll. As it reached takeoff speed and lifted off the ground, it came within 30 feet of hitting Chirac's 747. The now famous photograph of Flight 4590 ablaze, the only picture taken of the Concorde on fire, was snapped by passenger Toshihiko Sato on Chirac's jetliner. At the age of 69, Chirac faced his fourth presidential campaign in 2002. 
He received 20% of the vote in the first ballot of the presidential elections in April 2002. It had been expected that he would face incumbent Prime Minister Lionel Jospin in the second round of elections. Instead, Chirac faced controversial Farite politician Jean Marie Le Pen of National Front, who came in 200,000 votes ahead of Jospin. All parties outside the National Front called for opposing Le Pen, even if it meant voting for Chirac. The 14 day period between the two rounds of voting was marked by demonstrations against Le Pen and slogans such as Vote for the Crook, not for the fascist, or Vote with a clothespin on your nose. Chirac won re election by a landslide, with 82% of the vote on the second ballot. However, Chirac became increasingly unpopular during his second term. According to a July 2005 poll, 32% judged Chirac favorably and 63% unfavorably. In 2006, The Economist wrote that Chirac is the most unpopular occupant of the Elysee Palace in the Fifth Republic's history. As the left wing Socialist Party was in thorough disarray following Jospin's defeat, Chirac reorganized politics on the right, establishing a new party. Initial I called the Union of the Presidential Majority, then the Union for a Popular Movement. The RPR had broken down, a number of members had formed Euroceptus breakaways. While the Giscardian liberals of the Union for French Democracy had moved to the right, the UMP won the parliamentary elections that followed the presidential poll with ease. During an official visit to Madagascar on July 21, 2005, Chirac described the repression of the 1947 Malagasy uprising, which left between 80,000 and 90,000 dead, as unacceptable. Despite past opposition to state intervention the Chirac government approved a 2.8 billion euro zero aid package to troubled manufacturing giant Alstom. In October 2004, Chirac signed a trade agreement with PRC President Hu Jintao where Alstom was given 1 billion euro zero in contracts and promises of future reinvestment in China. On July 14, 2002, during Bastille Day celebrations, Chirac survived an assassination attempt by a lone gunman with a rifle hidden in a guitar case. The would be assassin fired a shot toward the presidential motorcade, before being overpowered by bystanders. The gunman, Maxime Brunery, underwent psychiatric testing. The violent far right group with which he was associated, Unite Radicale, was then administratively dissolved. Along with Vladimir Putin, Hu Jintao, and Gerhard Schröder, Chirac emerged as a leading voice against George W. Bush and Tony Blair in 2003 during the organization and deployment of American and British forces participating in a military coalition to forcibly remove then-current government of Iraq controlled by the Ba'ath Party under the leadership of Saddam Hussein which resulted in the 2003-2011 Iraq War. Despite intense British and American pressure, Chirac threatened to veto, at that given point, a resolution in the UN Security Council that would authorize the use of military force to rid Iraq of alleged weapons of mass destruction, and rallied other governments to his position. Iraq today does not represent an immediate threat that justifies an immediate war, Chirac said on March 18, 2003. Chirac was then the target of various American and British commentators supporting the decisions of Bush and Blair. Future Prime Minister Dominique de Villepin acquired much of his popularity for his speech against the war at the United Nations. After Toko's leader Nassim Bey Ayadima's death on February 5, 2005, Chirac gave him tribute and supported his son, Foray Nassim Bey, who has since succeeded to his father. On January 19, 2006, Chirac said that France was prepared to launch a nuclear strike against any country that sponsors a terrorist attack against French interests. He said his country's nuclear arsenal had been reconfigured to include the ability to make a tactical strike in retaliation for terrorism. In July 2006, the G8 met to discuss international energy concerns. Despite the rising awareness of global warming issues, the G8 focused on energy security issues. Chirac continued to be the voice within the G8 summit meetings to support international action to curb global warming and climate change concerns. Chirac warned that humanity is dancing on a volcano and called for serious action by the world's leading industrialized nations. Chirac requested the Landau Report and combined with the report of the Technical Group on Innovative Financing Mechanisms formulated upon request by the heads of state of Brazil, Chile, France and Spain, these documents present various opportunities for innovative financing mechanisms while equally stressing the advantages of tax-based models. Unitent project was born. Today the organization executive board is chaired by Philippe Daus Blasey. On May 29, 2005, 
a referendum was held in France to decide whether the country should ratify the proposed treaty for a constitution of the European Union. The result was a victory for the No campaign, with 55% of voters rejecting the treaty on a turnout of 69%, dealing a devastating blow to Chirac and the Union for a Popular Movement Party, and a part of the centre-left which had supported the terrorist dot following the referendum defeat. Chirac replaced his Prime Minister Jean-Pierre Raffarin with Dominique de Villepondat in an address to the nation, Chirac has declared that the new cabinet's top priority would be to curb unemployment, which was consistently hovering above 10%, calling for a national mobilization to that effect. Following major student protests in spring 2006, which followed civil unrest in autumn 2005 after the death of two young boys in clichy sous bois one of the poorest French communes located in Paris suburbs, Chirac retracted the proposed first employment contract by promulgating, it, without applying it, an unheard of, and, some claim, illegal, move intended to appease the protesters while giving the appearance of not making a bolt face regarding the contract, and therefore to continue his support for his Prime Minister Dominique de Villepin. In early September 2005, he suffered an event that his doctors described as a vascular incident. It was reported as a minor stroke or a mini-stroke. He recovered and returned to his duties soon after. In a pre-recorded television broadcast aired on March 11, 2007, Jacques Chirac announced, in a widely predicted move, that he would not choose to seek a third term as France's president. My whole life has been committed to serving France, and serving peace, Chirac said, adding that he would find new ways to serve France after leaving office. He did not explain the reasons for his decision. Chirac did not, during the broadcast, endorse any of the candidates running for election, but did devote several minutes of his talk to a plea against extremist politics that was considered a thinly disguised invocation to voters not to vote for Jean-Marie Le Pen and a recommendation to Nicolas Sarkozy not to orient his campaign so as to include themes traditionally associated with Le Pen. Shortly after leaving office, he launched the Fondation Chirac in June 2008. Since then it has been striving for peace through five advocacy programs conflict prevention, access to water and sanitation, access to quality medicines and health care, access to land resources, and preservation of cultural diversity. It supports field projects that involve local people and provide concrete and innovative solutions. Chirac chairs the jury for the prize for conflict prevention awarded every year by his foundation. As a former president, he is entitled to a lifetime pension and personal security protection, and is ex officio a member for life of France's Constitutional Council. He sat for the first time on the Council on November 15, 2007, six months after leaving the French presidency. Immediately after Sarkozy's victory, Chirac moved into a 180 square meter duplex on the Quai Voltaire in Paris lent to him by the family of former Lebanese Prime Minister Rafik Hariri. During the Didier Schuller affair, the latter accused Hariri of having participated in illegal funding of the RPR's political campaigns, but the judge closed the case without further investigations. In volume 2 of his memoirs published in June 2011, Chirac mocked his successor Nicolas Sarkozy as irritable, rash, impetuous, disloyal, ungrateful, and unfrench. Chirac wrote that he considered firing Sarkozy previously, and conceded responsibility in allowing Jean-Marie Le Pen to advance in 2002. A poll conducted in 2010 suggested he was the most admired political figure in France, while Sarkozy was 32nd. On April 11, 2008, Chirac's office announced that he had undergone successful surgery to fit a pacemaker. In January 2009, it was reported that Chirac had been hospitalized after being attacked by his pet Maltese poodle. According to Chirac's wife Bernadette, the dog, named Sumo, had a history of unpredictable and vicious behavior and had previously been medicated with antidepressants in an attempt to control it. Chirac is losing memory and suffers from a frail health. As president, he suffered a stroke in 2005. In February 2014 he was admitted to hospital because of pains related to gout. On December 10, 2015, Chirac was hospitalized in Paris for undisclosed reasons, although his state of health didn't give any cause for concern, he remained for about a week in ICU. According to his son-in-law Frédéric Salat Baru, Chirac was again hospitalized in Paris with a lung infection on 18 September 2016. Because of Jacques Chirac's long career and visible government positions, he has often been parodied or caricatured. Young Jacques Chirac is the basis of a young, dashing bureaucrat character in the 1976 Asterix comic strip album Obelix & Co.
proposing methods to quell Gallic unrest to elderly, old-style Roman politicians. Chirac was also featured in Le Bibi's show as an overexcited, jumpy character. Jacques Chirac is a favorite character of Les Guignols de Linfo, a satiric latex puppet show. He was once portrayed as a rather likable, though overexcited, character, however, following the corruption allegations, he has been shown as a kind of dilettante and incompetent who pilfers public money and lies through his teeth. His character for a while developed a superhero alter ego, Super Montour in order to get him out of embarrassing situations. Because of his alleged improprieties, he was lambasted in a song Chirac and Prison by French punk band Les Wampas, with a video clip made by the Guignols. Charles Favy appears as Chirac in the Oliver Stone film W. Mark Riffo plays him in Richard Longcurrent's 2010 film The Special Relationship. Bernard Lecoq portrays Chirac in La Dernière Campagne and The Conquest by Bernard Lecoq. At the invitation of Saddam Hussein, Chirac made an official visit to Baghdad in 1975. Saddam approved a deal granting French oil companies a number of privileges plus a 23% share of Iraqi oil. As part of this deal, France sold Iraq the Osirak MTR nuclear reactor, designed to test nuclear materials. The Israeli Air Force alleged that the reactor's imminent commissioning was a threat to its security, and preemptively bombed the Osirak reactor on 7 June 1981, provoking considerable anger from French officials and the United Nations Security Council. The Osirak deal became a controversy again in 2002-2003, when an international military coalition led by the United States invaded Iraq and forcibly removed Hussein's government from power. France led several other European countries in an effort to prevent the invasion. The Osirak deal was then used by parts of the American media to criticize the Chirac led opposition to starting a war in Iraq, despite French involvement in the Gulf War. Chirac has been named in several cases of alleged corruption that occurred during his term as mayor, some of which have led to felony convictions of some politicians and aides. However, a controversial judicial decision in 1999 granted Chirac immunity while he was president of France. He refused to testify on these matters, arguing that it would be incompatible with his presidential functions. Investigations concerning the running of Paris City Hall, the number of whose municipal employees increased by 25% from 1977 to 1995, as well as a lack of financial transparency in the communal debt, were thwarted by the legal impossibility of questioning him as president. The conditions of the privatization of the Parisian water system acquired very cheaply by the general and the Lyonnais d'Eau, then directed by Jérôme Monod, a close friend of Chirac, were also criticized. Furthermore, the satirical newspaper Le Canard HNA revealed the astronomical food expenses paid by the Parisian municipality, expenses managed by Roger Romani. Thousands of people were invited each year to receptions in the Paris City Hall, while many political, Media and artistic personalities were hosted in private flats owned by the city. Chirac's immunity from prosecution ended in May 2007, when he left office as president. In November 2007 a preliminary charge of misuse of public funds was filed against him. Chirac is said to be the first former French head of state to be formally placed under investigation for a crime. On October 30, 2009, a judge ordered Chirac to stand trial on embezzlement charges dating back to his time as mayor of Paris. On March 7, 2011, he went on trial on charges of diverting public funds, accused of giving fictional city jobs to 28 activists from his political party while serving as the mayor of Paris. Along with Chirac, nine others stood trial in two separate cases, one dealing with fictional jobs for 21 people and the other with jobs for the remaining seven. The president of Union for a Popular Movement, who later served as France's Minister of Foreign Affairs, Alain Juppé, was sentenced to a 14-month suspended prison sentence for the same case in 2004. On December 15, 2011, Chirac was found guilty and given a suspended sentence of two years. He was convicted of diverting public funds, abuse of trust and illegal conflict of interest. The suspended sentence meant he did not have to go to prison, and took into account his age, health, and status as a former head of state. He did not attend his trial, since medical doctors deemed that his neurological problems damaged his memory. His defense team decided not to appeal. During April and May 2006, Chirac's administration was beset by a crisis as his chosen prime minister, Dominique de Villepin, was accused of asking Philippe Rondot, a top level French spy, for a secret investigation into Villepin's chief political rival, Nicolas Sarkozy, 
In 2004, this matter has been called the second Clearstream affair. On May 10, 2006, following a cabinet meeting, Chirac made a rare television appearance to try to protect Villepon from the scandal and to debunk allegations that Chirac himself had set up a Japanese bank account containing 300 million francs in 1992 as mayor of Paris. Chirac said that the republic is not a dictatorship of rumors, a dictatorship of calumny. In 1954 Chirac presented the development of the Port of New Orleans, a short geography-slash-economic thesis to the Institut d'études politiques de Paris, which he had entered three years before. The 182-page typewritten work, supervised by Professor Jean Chardonnay, is illustrated by photographs, sketches and diagrams. President of the French Republic, 1995-2007. Re-elected in 2002. Member of the Constitutional Council of France, since 2007. Governmental functions, Prime Minister, 1974-76, 1986-88. Minister of Interior, March to May 1974. Minister of Agriculture and Rural Development, 1972-74. Minister of Relation with Parliament, 1971-72. Secretary of State for Economy and Finance, 1968-71. Secretary of State for Social Affairs, 1967-68. Electoral Mandates, European Parliament. Member of European Parliament, 1979-80. Elected in 1979. National Assembly of France. Elected in 1967, re-elected in 1968, 1973, 1976, 1981, 1986, 1988, 1993. Member for Coraz, March to April 1967, re-elected in 1968, 1973, but he remained a minister in 1976 to 1986, 1988-95. General Council, President of the General Council of Coraz, 1970 to 1979, re-elected in 1973, 1976. General Councilor of Coraz, 1968-88, re-elected in 1970, 1976, 1982. Municipal Council, Mayor of Paris, 1977-95, re-elected in 1983, 1989. Councillor of Paris, 1977 to 1995, re-elected in 1983, 1989. Municipal Councillor of Saint Ferriol, 1965-77, re-elected in 1971. Political function: President of the Rally for the Republic, 1976-94. Thanks for watching. Don't forget like the video and don't forget to subscribe.